It's a problem for us to get water here, but still they send in a bill. It's like living in, 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 in the Sahara Desert, you know, and no water. Rainfall was very, very, very low, very low below normal. In fact, what we have been asking people to do, they should continue to do now, even be more vigilant in terms of the use of water. Water which is used, I mean, for washing or even rinsing of dishes could be used to water your flowers. Hello everyone, this is On The Spot, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network, NTN. I am Primus Hutchinson. On this program, the current drought situation will be highlighted. Wasco officials have become rationing the supply of water here at the John Compton Dam. We will speak with Wasco officials as well as a representative of the Forestry Department regarding this critical situation. So stay with us as we go On The Spot. We do have a drought monitor where we look at um, the rainfall patterns and we also look at rainfall projections in our region. Now what happened from last year, we noticed that during the dry season, what is traditionally the dry season, it was kind of very wet. We had way above normal rainfall. And come um, around May, June, July, we noticed that the rainfall was very, very low, much below normal. From September last year, right, which is normally the, the rainfall period, right, there have been little rainfall or reduced amount of rainfall. Then we came into the dry period, January, and then people began to realize, well, look, I mean, with the dry, peri dry period and we had no water during the rain period, we had no hurricanes which were expected to bring rains and to recharge our rivers, to recharge our water sources, but that didn't happen. And according to the predictions from the MET services, it indicates that rainfall patterns would still continue like that. In other words, a reduced amount of rainfall. In fact, the average rainfall over a 42-year period was about 222.2 millimeters. And we, I think we only recorded somewhere around 50 or so. It is this lack of rainfall, coupled with the baking sun, that is responsible for drought conditions that brings about damage to the environment and misery to human beings. Even the birds have to scavenge for water and food. This river is normally vibrant. However, due to the drought, it barely trickles. Other rivers are not so fortunate as they are reduced to sunbeds or mere rock beds. When water comes from rivers. Right? And we must control, we must, we must, we must conserve our, our, our trees in order for, for, for the rivers to actually um, produce the kind of water that we would need to sustain us. So indiscriminate deforestation all right, on, on private lands, right? I think is one reason why you, 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 we have, we have a, a, a drought, drought situation in right now. So I think we need to, we need to, to try and, and, and protect our, our, our forest resources a little, a little better in order to help the, the water situation. This is the John Compton Dam at full capacity. The lack of rainfall has reduced its storage capacity to critical level. I think there has been a, a very wide public discussion on siltation in the dam. Um, we are aware that there has been some siltation even at the very start, especially after Debbie. Uh, what I have found or I've learned since being with Wasco is that the dam has two levels at which water is extracted from it. And any water below that lowest point of extraction really cannot be used. 
Uh, my understanding is that all of the silt that's in the dam is actually at the bottom of this dam and below the lowest level that we can in fact extract water. Um, if the silt begins to approach the bottom level that we can extract, then it is timely to clear it out. Um, at the moment, my understanding is that the silt has not yet approached the lowest level that we can remove water from the dam. So the usable water in the dam is still available to us. So in terms of preparing for a drought, generally we, we make sure that our storage systems are in order. You make sure that they, they work well. Um, you check for any maintenance issues on the system. Um, also, we started making targets at which levels of water we would do certain things. So these were agreed. And um, these have been rolled out generally quite well. So as a result, we have reduced on the abstraction from the dam. We have, we have reduced it to two levels already. We went down to 6.5 from the 8.9. And now we have gone further down to 5 million gallons. And the whole idea of that is to be able to sustain the, the, the water in the dam throughout the dry period. Our legislations makes provision for the declaration of water emergencies once certain conditions exist. Our rivers, the water levels are, are dwindling. So we advise the minister and he declared, well, we have to declare that emergency and encourage people, one, not to see, for example, take water and who's, use a hose to wash your car and to, you know, take water and irrigate your, 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 your lawns and so on, right? A number of important measures have to be put in place. And one that may sound a little controversial, see, for example, the construction companies, um, they advise not to use Wasco water, but you do need water of a certain quality for construction, but you can obtain that from other sources. See, for example, high up in the river or some special sources which we, in conjunction with the Ministry of Communications and Work, can indicate, well, look, you can abstract water from those sources to do your construction. And also there is the issue of issuing licenses for the abstraction of water. Now, that is a new development because originally, Licenses were not being issued for people to extract water. Right now, if you have a source of water on your land or your boundary to a source of water, whether it's a river or a well or something, it belongs to the state, it belongs to the crown. And you allow private use, and that private use includes um, subsistence use, like to irrigate your garden or, or to wash and other domestic use. But if you want to go into any commercial activity, for example, like construction and using it for an elaborate amount, you will require to use or apply for a license from our agency. The drought has uncovered a lot of things. Um, I'm speaking to a friend of mine recently. He has his home with a sister and collects rainwater during the rainy season. And that water is used to flush toilets and to irrigate. Now that's an extremely good idea. Um, so those of us who are in the process of constructing houses should seriously consider that. And we can use rainwater for lots of things, rather than use portable water. And it's a very good idea going forward. It is within our society, it is within our nature, normally to resort to, to rivers when no water is around. The onus is on, you know, on us as individuals when we go to the rivers to practice you know healthy healthy practices you know do not defecate do not you know dispose of garbage which at the end could you know could lead to disease transmission you know, to, to us so the public health point of view we are concerned about you know the implications of the quality of water which people are going to be consumed the practices which are go, going to affect you know the health status of these individuals what do you find happening within these drought situations are people normally resort to unsafe sources of water they normally resort to covered storage drums, tanks, or even the use of rivers. And then going back to these unsafe sources, which may be example, maybe a river, you have the implications or you have the possibility of 
disease resubmerging, you understand? For example, schistosomiasis or the bilazia resubmerging because these sources of water could be contaminated and hence, you know, would serve as, a, you know, as a, an agent of transmission to, to the general public. We as the agency has to make a firm commitment to really manage that resource, which is precious, so that our generation can use it and our future generations could also benefit from it. Because in the absence of water, I'm telling you, a lot would be, well, there would be great destruction. Plants, animals, and human, <laughs> humanity, sure. right? So I'm advising or I'm encouraging everybody, let us protect that resource, let us conserve it, use it wisely for yourself, and at the same time, think of the future. Every family should actually be attempting to use less water going about their daily, their daily lives and um, make use of what they have and try to make it last as long as possible. Things like washing cars are really not necessary I mean, at this time and um, these things should be cut out completely. Um, wetting lawns and, and, and wetting plants at this time is something you can do without. Or use reusable, you know, recycled water to do that. A few steps which could be taken in terms of disinfecting water that you would have portable water is that you could treat it with a gallon of water if it drops of liquid bleach. Also, we could boil that water for bring it up to boiling point and let it stand. And after we could consume this. These are the two household ways which we could you know implement to get safe water. There are a few other water conservation tips which we could pass on, and that is um you know, take shorter showers, you know, don't let the water run while you're brushing your teeth or, you know, you're rinsing your dishes. Um, also, there's a very effective method which you could conserve water, which most people don't know about, and that is placing a one liter bottle filled with water in your toilet tanks. This would enable less, you know, less water for flushing and thereby conserving water. Water which is used, I mean, for washing or even rinsing of dishes could be used to water your flowers. So these are conservation tips which could be used and you could, you know, engage in and that would, you know, help sort of alleviate, you know, what we're going through right now. This has been On The Spot, a production of the Government Information Service and the National Television Network, NTN. I'm Primus Hutchinson. On this program, we highlighted the present drought situation and we're hoping that all will heed the warnings of the officials as we continue to hope for an improvement in the supply of water from intakes island-wide. Well, that's where we come to the end of our program. We thank you for viewing and we invite you to join us again when we go on the spot.